Hi everybody, welcome back to another SUP board video where we're going to be looking at the paddleboard brand Gladiator SUP and giving you an overview of the elite range of boards. We've also done this video for the Origin range and the Pro range from Gladiator as well, so really worth watching those videos. Also, to help you understand which one of these ranges will be best for you. But if you're focused more into this video than the other ones, no doubt you're probably looking for a paddleboard that gives you a little bit more performance compared to the other two. The Elite range is the best range on the market from Gladiator. The best materials, the best shapes, and also a lot of the boards in their design characteristics are geared up to paddling that bit further and that bit faster. There are 12 boards in the Elite range. Prices start from £599 up to £725. They are about £100 more expensive on each board compared to the Pro range. And you can see by the spread of the boards on the screen that they are really pushing towards the longer base boards. There are no 10 foot 6 length boards in this range compared to like the Pro range and the Origin range. They've still got a good range of widths though and they've still got a very good range of thicknesses as well. Just a recap on the thicknesses, they've got 4.7 and a 5.9 inch thick. Remember, if you're 75 kg and down, you're gonna be looking at the 4.7 inch thick board opposed to the 5.9 inch thick board. But if you're heavier, or if you wanna carry that much more weight and have a longer base board with a bit more stiffness, definitely looking at the thicker 5.9 board would be best. We'll speak about thickness and stiffness and construction in a minute. And the Elite range is the first time you'll see 14 foot inflatable SUPs on the Gladiator range as well. The 14 foot SUPs are a very quick SUP to paddle. They are gonna be the fastest board because they're gonna give you the most water line length. They are gonna be faster to paddle than the 12 six lengths. The 12 six lengths are really good for that all round sort of touring racing experience. Still got a number of different widths there available. So there's a good range of boards for you to look at. Remember, if you want more stability, go for the wider base board. If you want more speed, go for the narrow base board. But if you're unsure about what type of board you should be looking at, definitely watch the other two videos, the Origin and the Pro range to help you understand a little bit more about that. And before we get off the board shapes and sizes, definitely worth a mention, if you've got any fast paddling kids out there, they've got some very good scaled race boards up there. 10.6 and 11.6, gonna be really good for those budding racers. So if you've got any kids that wanna paddle that bit faster and have a scaled board for them, then the Elite has got the boards for them as well. These boards are considerably lighter than the Pro or the Origin range. A 12.6 touring board is looking about nine kilos. The reason they are lighter is all to do with the construction, which we'll speak about now. So you have multiple layers of PVC laminated together, just like the Origin and the Pro, and you still have an internal core of drop stitch, but the drop stitch and the way that it's bonded to the actual outer shell is very, very different. You have woven drop stitch. What woven drop stitch does is it just gives you a much lighter core to the board, but still gives you a good amount of stiffness. A lot of the top inflatable paddle boards now are made out of woven technology. It is a more expensive technology, but if you are wanting that faster, lighter, stiffer experience on the water, then that is what you're gonna be looking at. And that's what they've put in to the Elite range. Not only that, they've still got the triple X strong rails, so the top and bottom of the board gets wrapped right around the side of the board and then there is two layers of extra material on top of that which in effect makes it three layers of material. That gives you more stiffness, way more hard wearing and I always think a lighter board is a lot less likely to be damaged because it's easier to carry in the first place. But let's move seamlessly on to our deflection test which is where we measure how much the boards bend. And we put them on a gap of 1.5 meters apart and we put 75 kilograms of weight on the center and then we just measure the deflection or the bend of these boards. We've done it with all the boards that we've reviewed all so far. So we pumped these boards up to 18 PSI and 20 PSI. We tested the 4.7 and the 5.9 inch thick board. The 4.7 at 18 PSI dropped 15 millimeters. At 20 PSI it dropped 13 millimeters. 
And to be fair, that those measurements of the 4.7 inch thick are actually the same as the Pro range of boards at 4.7 inch thick. So it actually shows that the Pro range is a fairly stiff board. But remember, with woven technology, you've still got a lighter base board. When, but when we get into the 5.9 inch thick, the numbers did go down quite a bit. At 18 PSI, it dropped 10 millimeters, and at 20 PSI, it dropped nine millimeters. Now, just a heads up, the stiffest board we've ever tested on a board has been seven millimeters, and that was a board that weighed 13 kilos. So bear in mind, we're doing it to a nine kilo board. You've got a huge weight saving, and it's still a fairly stiff board. So straight away, you can see if you're after performance, you're after a stiff board, that when you put your paddle stroke in the water, the board doesn't flex and slow you down. It just pushes forward across the water. The elite range is the range of boards you should be looking at. But remember, you can still pump these boards up to 26 PSI, just like the other boards, the Pro and the Origin. So if you really want big stiffness, get the pressure in this board, get these boards right up to the max pressure. Definitely a word on pressure, thickness, and longer base boards. If you are gonna be looking at paddling more longer distance and putting more weight on your board, looking towards a thicker base board will be a little bit better, opposed to the 4.7 inch thick board. Even though you might only be 70 kilos, if you're gonna be putting weight on the board, it is gonna change how the board feels and how the board you know sits in the water it's going to sit a little bit lower obviously if you're 70 kilos 65 kilos you're not putting any weight on the board you're going to want to get thinner baseboard so a 4.7 will be great for that but a lot of you out there if you're going to be buying a 12 6 a 14 foot or even some of the longer 11 foots if you want to put extra weight on your board i would strongly advise you looking towards a 5.9 inch thick unless you are super light and not really wanting to carry very much weight at all and when it comes to paddling boards on the water, when they are lighter, there is a lot quicker pickup speed when it comes to inflatable paddle boards. If you're trying to paddle a heavy board through the water, it is much, much slower to paddle. It's a lot less re reactive. It's gonna require you to keep the power in a lot more, opposed to just having a board that wants to glide a little bit more effortlessly and not fall off the speed so much. And if you're interested into maybe trying to enter your first race, looking at a woven board, a board of these type of weights and these stiffnesses is definitely something I would advise looking at. So let's look at the package now. What do you get with the Elite range? Well, first off, the bag. The bag is actually exactly the same as the Pro bag. You do have a different colorway. I do think the blue, dark blue color does look pretty funky with these bags and the orange sort of pinstripe around the back of the zip area looks really smart. You still got your nice backpack area. You can still fold it away if you don't want to use the backpack. You still get the wheels. It's a really nice, comfortable bag. It's nice and easy to get your board in. The pump also, it's the same pump as you get with the Pro Boards. It's a Bravo Super Pump, a test winning pump from us. Got foldable foot pegs, it's got unscrew handles there. You can really make the pump nice and compact. Easily puts the top pressure into the board. It's a two-way pump, so you can pump on the upstroke and on the downstroke. And then when the pumping gets hard or it starts to get loaded up on your arms when you're pulling up, you can turn the nozzle over at the back and just pump on the downstroke nice pump to have with the package. A really big plus this year is they've got some really nice fins with the elite range of boards. When you unpack it a board and you see a fin like this on an inflatable paddle board, you can tell this is a top of the range paddle board. This is a glass fiber honeycomb sort of G10 US box touring race shape fin. Really nice shape. A good bit of width here at the base, nice bit of width at the bottom here. It's going to offer you a good amount of stability in the water as you're rocking from side to side. It's dead stiff, so it's going to help you track in a straight line and the profile of the fin is really, really nice. It's just another nice thing. If you're spending more money on your kit, it's nice to have nicer stuff to put onto your kit. It's the same fin box as the other ones, except a much nicer fin. Looking at the paddle, it's a carbon shaft paddle same as the Pro, except this time you get a carbon shaft and a carbon blade. And the blade is a much better shape than the other paddles in the range. So it's a nice thin profile. So it's a much more racy base paddle. You might notice that a lot of newer paddles are much more like this sort of shape opposed to the sort of old traditional teardrop shape. 
This means that they enter and exit the water much quicker and they don't produce so much load on your shoulders as well. So full carbon blade, much nicer profile compared to the other ones. It's also much lighter again. You're gonna have to look after it. You can't ram this one up the beach. You can't dig sandcastles this, with this one. Well, you probably still could and it'd probably still be fairly hard worrying, but it definitely would have scratches on it, put it that way. So the paddle's much nicer. It's still a three piece paddle. You can still get the top section and put it into the bottom section if you wanted to make a really nice kids paddle. Probably not, but you can do it. And it's still nice and easy to adjust for all different heights of riders. And it's still a three piece, obviously, so it goes in the bag. You still get the Allen keys and all of the stuff you need to tighten up all your clips and clamps in the repair kit, which is really nice. With some other brands, the top end paddles that come with their packages have got anti-twist sections on the top of the paddle. But to be honest, we've locked this paddle down nice and solid and it doesn't seem to twist. So actually it's not really too much of a problem. I think you could take this paddle racing as a first timer. You could take this paddle surfing if you wanted to. You could take it touring. You could do a lot of stuff before actually you wanted to upgrade it. So you do get a nice paddle that is more than adequate for the price point of the package. The leash is the same leash that we've had across all of the range of boards. Different color. These ones are more bluey purple that matches the bag color. A nice coiled leash, it's well made, good thickness. I did mention it in the other two videos. Leashes are really important these days with powder boarding. More people are aware that you need to wear a leash, but please be aware of what type of leash attachment you should be attaching it to you with. If you're paddling any tidal or moving water and there's a chance of getting your leash entangled on anything, you pl please, you've got to have a quick release that's easy to reach, ideally around your waist, attached onto this leash. Um, so do think about that. We're going to be doing loads more videos about that in the future as we get into it this summer. But this leash is absolutely adequate for, as I said, 90% of people when they're paddling open sea and flat water, non-tidal or moving water locations. So now let's talk about the look of the boards, the fittings on the boards, why these boards are different from the other boards in the Gladiator range. For a start, they're white, a completely different color from the other ones. The origins are gray, then you've got the dark blues in the pros, and then you have a white range of pilot boards for the elites. They do look quite eye-catching, they do stand out very much, and they're a lot easier to film with a black studio. The colorways, I really like the blue and the aqua blue, the orange and the dark purpley blues. They're smart and they do work really well with the white. Obviously, white paddle boards, some people are going to be going, oh, I'll get a muddy paddle board and they'll, sh they'll, they'll show up the mud. Yes, they will show up the marks and the grub a lot more than the darker color paddle boards. But if you can keep them clean, they are a fresh looking paddle board look. The deck pad is the same style deck pad as on the pro board. So you still have that crocodile skin type EVA deck grip. There's still two layers of deck grip. So it's a nice little feature that they've set them on top of each other it does sort of stand itself up very different from other brands out there and the way that they've laid out the deck pad is very different as well the nice that it goes right to the back of the tail cut around the valve at the back there there's handles at the front and the back just like on the origin and the pro range and there's also a nice big padded handle in the middle of the board so getting your board in and out of the water especially if you're touring with gear on the front and the back it's nice and easy because you can have somebody help you at the front you can grab the board at the back. You can get the board in out of the water easy by rotating it around on the tail. Having handles at the front and back does make a massive difference. Another nice, neat design feature that looks pretty smart is the way that they've done the bungees, especially at the front. They've got a new type of bungee themselves. It's not a corded bungee like you see on all the other paddle boards. It is a wide, flat sort of webbing. It's still elasticated and it's actually color, color match with the deck pad. And it definitely does complete the whole look of the board, whether you're going for the orange and purple one or the aqua and blue one. And when it comes to the outline shape of these boards, the real bonus is that refined nature of the rails and the nose and the tail of these boards. I touched on it with the pro range of boards. It's the way that they're constructed. The rails are wrapped right round so you've got a triple layer of material. And because of that, it brings the nose shape down on the front of the board. It gives you a much more refined hydrodynamic nose shape. So if you're punching through chop, especially with these longer base boards, because the, all these boards have got the more pointy noses, much, much easier to paddle in, the, in those choppy waters, much less effort 
maybe if you're paddling into wind and you put gear on the front of the board, they're much more effective at cutting through the water. So that is a real standout feature when you see these boards pumped up. The nose is really looks very well finished, very refined. Again, the pro ones have got that, but because these are longer and thinner, generally all of them, you do notice it more with this elite range. Just like the Pro and the Origin boards, three year warranty with the Elite boards as well. The cheaper boards on the market will have a one year warranty and some of the other top end brands will push to a five year warranty. So three years is a pretty comfortable warranty to have on a board. So now let's talk about some cons and negatives to be aware of with the Gladiator SUP Elite range of boards. The placement of the front bungees, they look fantastic, but to be fair, they are a little bit too far forward. They're not actually too far forward when you're actually paddling. We took these boards out with 15 kilos of weight in a dry bag, and then we paddled it. And you can see the board actually handled itself pretty well, and that's because it's nice and stiff. But the choppier it gets and the windier it gets, the more water onto that nose, it's gonna make that board nosedive that little bit more. But another problem with having your dry bag further forward on the board is a lot of you out on the water will need to access your dry bag while you're on the water. And having your bag right at the front of the board can be a bit tricky to get to, especially if it's choppy or slightly moving water. So it's a real shame that those bungees aren't further back on the board. But the other negatives are the ones that do come with back bungees are also a little bit too far back and actually not spread out enough to put a good amount of weight on. I do find these boards could be really good touring base shapes because they have got that refined nose. They are nice and light to carry. So if you're carrying and portaging your kit over a lock or over a dam to get back in the other side, they are nice and light. They're nice and stiff. It's just the cargo area isn't quite laid out right to be 100% perfect for a tourer. Apart from that, the paddle's nice, the pump's nice, the, the fin is fantastic, the bag works really well, there's no other complaints at all, and the price point, where well, you're still getting a hell of a lot of board for your money. So in summary, if you're a paddler that wants to paddle a little bit further, or a little bit faster, or have a board that's a little bit more tailored just to you and your size, and you're not gonna share it with your friends and your family so much, the elite range of boards is the boards of range I'd be looking at out of the Gladiator SUP. More money, but if you're committed to SUP and you really want to get the most out of it, it's a good range that you should be looking at in 2022. Hope you found this video interesting and informative and it helps you understand if the Gladiator SUP Elite range is the range for you. Definitely, if you haven't checked it out already, check out our overview videos of the Origin and the Pro range as well. That'll help you understand if those are better for you. If you've got an Elite, if you've used an Elite, if you've got last year's Elite, let us know, get the comments, get the questions in below. Let us know your full review on the SUP Border website. We'd love to hear some SUP Border reader reviews and then we can feed them back to the brand so they can improve into the future. And if you're really trying to understand about certain bits of equipment or certain techniques, get yourself signed into SUP Border Pro. There's loads of technique videos out there and you also get unlimited questions to ask us on Ask the Experts so we can help make sure you get the best kit out there for you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you on another Subwater video real soon.